guys, uh, it's mid-April and our last video, if you remember, we uh, actually got the deck all gel coated. Um, it is uh, beautiful outside, it's supposed to be like 75, 80 degrees. Uh, and uh, we need to get some work done on this thing because if you follow me on Facebook, you know that I bought a big boat. And uh, it'll be ready uh, the end of this week and I want to be on it. So I want to get this boat done so that we can enjoy this for a little while before we sell it on to one of you guys. So. I uh, got a little work done earlier this week, uh, not a whole lot. Um, I got the uh, electrical done on the uh, uh, gauges. We got the gauges installed in the dashboard, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and kind of show you the wire flow and electro electrical and stuff like that. I had to kind of fix some problems that were done in this boat originally. Uh, they had kind of uh, rigged up some stuff that was not cor correct and it was going to cause an electrical problem uh, down the road, so I got it all fixed. Um, got to get ready to put the uh, windshield on. Uh, and uh, we also got the um, uh, steering rack installed also. I'll show you that. This Teleflex uh, that we had before was broken where it comes out of behind the, the uh, steering wheel. It actually had a broken plastic piece and you actually could turn the steering wheel almost a full turn before it would turn the engine. So that wasn't good. So I went ahead and spent the 200 bucks and got a brand new one. The big surprise of the day is the interior is here. Um, we are fixing to test fit this thing. Make sure it's 100%, so if it needs to be adjusted, we can take it back over to the interior shop. But I am really, really happy with what it was. It cost me a bunch of money, but uh, it looks as, as almost original as possible. We made a couple little changes on it, but other than that, it is 100%. So it's in the back of my truck. Let's go over and take a look at it. So, check it out. They are completely remade. All new wood, all new everything. We kind of redesigned this bottom piece here. Let's see if I can get it out. Because we're going to be screwing it down from the inside, I had them put studs on the back side of this, as you can see right here. So they recovered it. We have all new wood, all new everything, all new vinyl. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to screw this down to our pedestals in the boat. And then this will go on top and then we'll bolt it from the bottom with nylock screws. So therefore, this becomes two separate pieces. It was a kind of a really kind of hard decision to figure out how that was going to work. My upholstery guy said, "Man, let's put you some studs on there. We'll use washers and tighten it all down." But man, I tell you, it sure looks good. Let me get the other stuff out here. This is a side piece, and the piece of teak goes along right here and screws it up to the side. Another side piece. Actually, these are the bottoms. This is where the cup holders go, which I'll show you in a second. And they're kind of up like this, so I think this is the that's the front and this is the back. So this goes up against the uh, um, the back seat. Let me place those here in a minute. Look at these. So this goes up, and this is where your shifter, there's actually a hole right here. This is where your shifter goes, and this mounts up on the uh, top of the gunnel. <clears throat> Another one. And these are the two back pieces. Yep. I need it. Go right here. Just like that. And they bolt to the back seat. I guess those aren't going to stay very well. And then of course you've got the hood that goes right here. Oh, that looks good. Looks really, really good. 
All right, I'm gonna need some help to get this uh, back seat out, but we're gonna get this thing put in here, show you the final product. She fit every bit of it beautifully. I tell you, this uh, upholstery shop we found has done a great job. This was a really, really complex uh, stitching job, and they hit it out of the park. Um, the vinyl actually still needs to do a little bit of stretching when you leave it out in the sun to kind of, there's a couple little wrinkles and stuff like that that you, you just can't heat out with a heat gun. And it's actually been kind of cold here lately, so we're going to leave it out in the uh, sun, let it kind of loosen up a little bit, and then it will you know, kind of lay back into place. We still have to install the hinges on here so that way this back seat folds forward, gives you access underneath the seat for storage. We eliminated the seat headrests. I did not like the seat headrests at all. Um, they kind of ruined the, the look of the boat, so we took them off. So we've taken out the captain's chairs to kind of show you how the side panels go in. Um, we had everything remade. Like I said, this all new wood, all new everything. So we have the bottom piece down there. The top piece has to go in. You screw it in up underneath that black part into the fiberglass. And then the Mercruiser controls go there. And then you screw through this guy and then mount the, the uh, cup holders. And there's L brackets that attach to the seat and L brackets that attach to the, uh, to the bulkhead up there. Then you put a piece of teak across that bottom piece and then you're done. We still have, I don't know if I've said this or not, but we still have this, these pieces up at the upholstery shop. We were going to cover them ourselves, but he said, hey, just give them to me. I'm going to take care of it. So they're up there. It'll be done sometime next week. So guys, it's done. I have a baseball game to go to. We're going to take all this stuff apart and stow it away nicely. So we can continue putting this back together. Let's take a look at the wiring here. Um, I promise you guys that I kind of go over this and I've had a lot of <clears throat> requests kind of to explain how all this works. Uh, and it's actually pretty simple once you kind of think about it and I'll see what I can do about um, describing it as best I can. Um, basically you have, these are all the gauges and your switches. Now some boats you're not going to have all these on a nice removable panel. They're going to be kind of hidden away. But these are all in one panel so I can kind of show you in one fell swoop. And this is done. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is to attach my ground cable so my LEDs work on the switches. So you see that I've got a Molex plug here and a Molex plug here. <clears throat> this Molex plug is power and, and everything coming from the engine. Uh, it has a couple of sensors on it, uh, your tack, your uh, thermostat, and all that kind of stuff, but you got your main power and your main ground coming into here. And what those do is they come in here and they feed, the main power feeds your main ignition switch, uh, and then the main ignition switch daisy chains to each one of the, um, of the, the switches. And then each one of the switches, each, or I'm sorry, each one of the breakers, there's a breaker on each one of these, and then the breaker in turn feeds the switches. So therefore, those can actually go back out through this other Molex plug to run your accessories. So your lights, uh, your horn, your you know all your other stuff comes through this Molex plug. Now this is just this this boat, but this kind of gives you the idea of how it flows. Uh, and then you have these nice uh, yellow wires. These actually go over to your uh, engine uh, cutoff switch. These things have a if you're not in neutral. Uh, it will not let you start your motor, and all that is is just a simple electric uh, uh, ignition loop. Uh, and if it does not sense that you're neutral, you can't start it. It goes through here, goes up, and then across, and then loops through your ignition. And the other part of it loops through your ignition going back to your engine. So this is very crucial. Now, in an emergency situation, you could actually wire these two together and you'll be able to start it, but that's dangerous because you could start it with the engine and gear. So, <clears throat> we have our ignition switch, and you can tell whenever it has power to it, and then whenever you hit just ignition on, it loops out through this purple wire to the ignition side of this first gauge. And then from there, all the gauges loop the ignition to each one of them. So it kind of daisy chains down the way. And then each, so that each one of these gauges has a ground, a sensor, and ignition. So you've got three hookups basically. You can see one, two, and three. One, two, three. And then this one only has two. I uh, forget what this one is. Oh, this is just voltage. So all it needs is power and ground to tell you how much voltage that you have. Uh, and then there's a, there's a third little blade hookup on all of these, which are a blue wire, and that's your illumination. And that wires back to a, a, a uh, switch back here to be able to turn on your gauge illumination if you're driving at night. Um, basically that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple. Everything daisy chains together and once you kind of get it 
pulled apart and looked at, it kind of all makes sense. Now, a lot of these things were spliced. I had a lot of issues with them tying in things like the ignition cutoff wire. They had tied in somewhere else into like the gauge. It just didn't make sense. They also were pulling uh, trim power for the trim pump off of the power for the gauge and that would have blown a fuse or burnt a wire or something like that. So we went ahead and did it correctly. So, and then if you look sitting here, these are your harnesses that go to the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all these up, zip tie them all nice and neat, uh, and then we're going to put this back in here, get it all bolted back up, get the panels bolted back up, have the, the, uh, the teak trim piece all taken care of, and uh, we'll be ready to go. I got to get these things all cleaned up nice and neat before we finish putting all the rest of the interior in, but once we get these cleaned up, I'll zip tie those up back there, and then we're going to install the transom plate with a new seal here in a little while.